Christian, another one of the practices you talk about with uh, helping uh, you take up their cross is the practice of Bible study. Can you say a little bit more about what you mean by Bible study and how that relates to joy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when Traditionally in youth ministry, I think when we when we talk about Bible study, we almost always think about it as this intellectual endeavor to come to some kind of deeper understanding of, you know, what the text meant when it was written and like what some of the cultural context was. But in, in my understanding of, of reading the scripture and particularly in this uh, canonic model as a way of encountering and being filled with God's presence and, and coming to encounter coming to encounter Jesus Christ, then the scriptures are no longer simply this morality tale that we can somehow look at and extract some sort of lesson and apply it to our lives, right? We can't don't, have to, don't just have to go and look at the story of Zacchaeus, for example, and think like, well, what what is this trying to say and how can I apply that to my life? Um, but rather, the scriptures become almost more of a mirror, uh, a way of... Mm-hmm. of coming to understand uh, who we really are and who Christ is and how Christ interacts with us. So the question, for example, would, when we approach the Bible would no longer be, in what ways are you like the woman at the well in John 4, right? Rather, the presupposition would be, you are the woman at the well. Mm-hmm. We're not just trying to figure out what ways you're like and how you can apply that lesson, but rather the scriptures are telling you. It's not just that you're there to interpret the word, the word is actually interpreting you mm-hmm. uh, and telling you, you have had five husbands, you have had five lovers that are not God. What are those five lovers? And so then you're actually brought into this awareness of who you really are. And so we, you know, as much as culturally we want to do, go into this thing toward authenticity, I, I don't think that we're actually making that move, generally speaking, culturally. I think there is a lot of inauthenticity mm-hmm. that comes along because we're trying to find you know, the best outfit that expresses who we are. And it just so happens to be an outfit that, you know, manufacturers make us pay a lot of money for and they designed. So if we really wanted to be authentic, I guess, with our fashion, we would probably make our own clothes hewn out of hemp or whatever it may be. But that's not what we're doing. We're buying clothes that other people have made to somehow express us. But in the scriptures, we're shown who we really are. We're told that we've had five lovers. And so now we're invited into this deeper expression of authenticity, into this deeper way of saying who we really are. And it's not simply expressing ourselves, but rather it's confessing ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's a way of opening ourselves to the word of God, the living word of God, Jesus Christ, as he stands before the woman at the well. So too he stands before us, offering us living water. You know, as, as uh, he, he, he tells us the truth about who we are. Yeah, you, you've had five husbands and the guy you're with now, he's not even your husband either. So who are you trying to pull a quick one on, me or you? You know, who are you trying to, who are you trying to hide from? And I think this is why uh, mm. St. Isaac the Syrian says that it is a greater miracle for one to see oneself clearly than it is to raise the dead. Because we're so good at hiding from ourselves. We're so, so good at hiding from ourselves that we create these false projections to the world of who we are. And we do it maybe through social media or whatever it may be. But we create these, these false projections and scripture comes as a double-edged sword and shatters those things. It breaks them in half, it cuts them in, in, in half and shows our heart for what it really is. And it's only then that we really get a chance to come before God in confession and come before God in repentance uh, and, and understand that he's not there to somehow like shame us. I mean, he doesn't shame the woman at the well. He's just there to tell her who, who she is and to give her some living water. And that's, that's, so, that's, that's good news because we all have these, I think, scripts kind of running around in our head that God's somehow disappointed with us or that God doesn't really care about us, or that if maybe we were only better at praying, if we were better Christians, and like things would go our way. But in the scriptures, we, we see who, who we really are, and we see who God really is. In fact, even James himself says that, right? Like that the one who reads the word of God and does not do it is like the one who looks at his face in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like, right? So it's like you look in the scriptures and you see who you are, and then you leave forgetting who you really are. But if we, if we look at the word of God and we see who we are, we understand that there is life and that there is joy and that Christ stands before us waiting to encounter us and that he is also there to give us living water.